London, one of the most well-known and most visited cities in the world. A city filled with icons of British history and culture. A world-class city that's like an oasis of good food in, well, Britain. And the largest city in the European Union. Yeah, about that. Three and a half years ago, the UK narrowly voted to leave the European Union, which many a Londoner probably didn't exactly like the sound of. And thus, following the results and the threats of secession from Scotland and Northern Ireland, some of the capital have looked at the success stories of Singapore and Hong Kong and have toyed with the possibility of London splitting off from the UK. Would it be possible? What would it be like? And perhaps most importantly, what would need to happen? Sponsored by CuriosityStream. Click the link below to help out the channel. So, Brexit. Whatever you personally feel about it, it has happened. The United Kingdom is officially no longer in the European Union, which is having huge effects on the area. This all started seemingly 900 years ago when a referendum was conducted on whether the UK should leave or remain in the European Union. But in the end, the Leave Camp won with 51.9% of the national vote. A map of the outcome of the referendum, however, reveals that the vote wasn't completely even geographically, with Wales and England mostly voting to leave, and Scotland and Northern Ireland to remain. In the wake of this, many a politician called for follow-up referendums on Scotland and perhaps even Northern Ireland to gain independence. The latter result, however, was also the case with London, leading many to suggest, as crazy as it sounds, that London also leaves the United Kingdom and form its own country. So just for the sake of curiosity, how would this whole thing work if it were to come true? Well first, where exactly is London? It seems obvious, but if we're going to try to make a new country, we should at least agree on where the border should be. The most common way of determining which parts of the English Southeast are and are not part of London is with the borough boundary. Though there are a few other ways to determine whether or not you're in London. Check out this video from Londonist for more information on that. We're not going to care about postal codes or the M25 though, since people generally already agree that this here is London. So London's a city-state separate from the rest of England and presumably still in the European Union, meaning that border checks would likely have to be installed, which would probably not go well amongst everyone living along the borders between London and the home counties. This would also affect far-flung stations on the Metropolitan Line as well as Crossrail, or the Elizabeth Line, and everyone else who commutes from outside London. But border checks ensure maximum Brexit for the rest of the UK, as these will not just be borders between countries, but borders of the European Union itself. Of course, that country would be facing quite a bit of a bigger dilemma. Its goddamn capital is gone! That means that the United Kingdom would almost certainly need a new capital city and government institutions would have to be relocated to said capital, possibly even including the royal family. Though they have palaces everywhere, so that's probably not a problem. London has also been such an important city in British history that it would be hard to think of a good replacement for the capital. Manchester? Birmingham? York? This also brings us to the issue of the City of London. No, not the City of London, the City of the City of London. You know, the tiny little city enclaved right within central London. It is a separate entity from London as a whole, so would it come along for the ride? And if it remains part of the UK, how would that work? The city is an important financial centre within the important financial hub that is London, and its small and enclaved status would make it incredibly inconvenient for it to not be in the same country as London itself, although that sort of scenario isn't exactly unheard of. On a related note, however, transport probably wouldn't be too much of an issue, at least relatively speaking. London has plenty of ports and access to the sea via the Thames, which most likely wouldn't be restricted as this is the exact same way Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, and Serbia all have access to the sea. Air travel might be a bit cramped though. London currently has six airports, with only Heathrow and City being within London itself. London City Airport is a small airport normally used for business travelers, and Heathrow is near capacity, so something would have to be figured out. Trains to and from mainland Europe could also be figured out, but regional trains would naturally be quite a pain. 
and in terms of immigration, would probably work more like the trains in Hong Kong serving the PRC. Overall, I can sort of imagine the scenario being almost more Hong Kong than Singapore, which is generally considered part of the Pearl River Delta region, despite, you know, the border checks and separate immigration policies. That's at least keeping in mind immigration, because if London were to gain independence from the UK, obviously it would have different laws, but would it use a separate currency or other little things like that? Maybe London could enter some sort of weird arrangement where it remains part of the UK and the European Union? But perhaps more importantly, assuming this whole thing would even work with all the problems we set forward, would an independent London even be part of the EU? Brexit is the first ever instance of a country leaving the EU, and no new countries have been split off from an EU country. So we really don't know what would happen. It's likely to have some difficulties rejoining, however. After all, this would also send a message to places like Catalonia, or the Basque Country, or Flanders. Ultimately, London becoming a new country would be a weird thing to happen, but not exactly the weirdest thing that's ever happened in history. Of course, anyone who knows anything about London knows that it has a long and storied past, as does the UK as a whole. If you want to peek at a particular part of its history, might I recommend you watch the documentary Tea Wars, a documentary on how Britain got the recipe for tea from China, taking its place essentially as the world's first industrial level theft. You can watch this and thousands of other documentaries on this week's sponsor, CuriosityStream. If you know me, like, at all, you'll know that I love learning about the world and seeing new perspectives, of which documentaries are probably my favorite way of doing so. And so, I've seen a lot of different documentaries from a lot of different documentary websites. And in my experience, CuriosityStream has some of the best documentaries you can find online, from How to Build a Castle, to Digits by Derek Muller, to Stephen Hawking's Favorite Places, to Sea Rex, and thousands more, it's clear that they have the perfect selection to suit basically anyone's interests. To get started, you can click the link below, or go to curiositystream.com slash Canubis, and use the code Canubis for a one month free trial, and from there, it's $2.99 per month, or $19.99 for a whole year. Which is like what, one nice dinner at a pricey restaurant? Or in London, probably just a normal restaurant. So really, that's a steal of a price for a subscription to CuriosityStream, especially considering that by signing up, you will also be helping support the channel. Thank you as always for watching, and I really hope I was able to treat this topic with the sensitivity it deserves. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and share it, check out CuriosityStream to help out the channel, and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.